Hey everyone, thank you all for being here. Uh, great to see such a full house, like it's crazy. Um, we were just talking about it. it, it's lovely to see everybody here as a community. Uh, it's been a crazy year, right? Uh, AI has dominated the headlines and I talked about this at the AI Infra at Scale event a while ago. But we now see bigger, better models, um, really at unprecedented pace. We have tons of new AI-powered applications that are coming in again. Um, lots of new startups, lots of new ideas. And most important of all, we see lots and lots and lots of GPUs. Um, for Meta right now, AI is not new at Meta. We've, we've been working on AI for over a decade. Um, our newsfeed is all powered by AI. All of our ads uh, recommendation systems are all powered by AI. Um, and as of 2023, really, um, our AI jobs only ran, like our largest job was maybe run on, I would say, about 128 uh, A100 GPUs. Uh, but I only say only because once the LLM Big Bang began, in just a few months, we've scaled up our job sizes. We've gone from 1,000 to 4,000 to 16,000 GPUs. That's what Llama 3 was trained on and that continues to grow. We're also seeing similar scaling trends, by the way, on, on our ranking and recommendation models as well. We just think scaling is gonna be a huge foundational part of our journey, and we think our journey is about 1% down. So to support this kind of scale and this exponential growth um, in demand for accelerators, we operate a highly heterogeneous fleet at Meta. And by heterogeneous, I mean in every, every kind of way. We have CPUs and GPUs, of course, but even within that, we have many different stripes. We have AMD, we have A100s, we have H100s, we have Rocky, we have Infinite Band. And so variety is really quite, um, qu quite wide. And so since this is the Triton conference, we w let's talk about how Triton is one of the foundational blocks for us, why it's important to our strategy, why we're betting on it and how we plan to take this forward. First, open source. We've been pretty public about our stance uh, at Meta with how we think about open source. Um, generally speaking, we believe an open approach um, helps distribute innovation, and it acts as a countervailing force for, for, for a concentration of power that might otherwise live with a few entities or maybe even just one entity. And so I think our open position is actually pretty cool, but it's not new to us. Like the models themselves are now open source. We launched the 8 billion model in April. We launched a Llama 370 billion model also in April. And just in July, we launched a 4 or 5 billion parameter model, the largest open source frontier model that's out there in the industry. And it's not just about our models though, right? We have a long history of open sourcing at Meta going back all the way to our infrastructure. We, were, um, we launched the Open Compute Project several years ago, where we open sourced many of our data center designs. We launched React, which is one of the most popular um, interfaces for a library for building user interfaces. And then closer to home, we helped launch PyTorch, which is the most popular machine learning um, developer framework that's out there today. So we've seen entire industries and ecosystems evolve because of our open source philosophy and we continue, we want to continue to enhance that. So Triton fits into our broader strategy at Meta. And what's cool about Triton is it enables efficient and accessible GPU programming and that's really important, especially when you look at the kind of heterogeneity that we're aiming for across our fleet. And so we intend to continue to building this community for Triton in collaboration with our hyperscalers, in collaboration with our silicon vendors. That's just part of our core strategy. So I've already told you that Meta's data center has diverse accelerators, but why do we need so much diversity? The answer is now rooted in two big fundamental principles. One, scaling loss continue to grow, like we, we continue to hold. So model quality today improves with more, mo more data, more parameters, and we see that trend continuing. And the second is the pace of innovation in the models themselves is growing, right? We see new architectures evolve. The transformer wasn't here until just a few years ago, and we expect this trend to continue over and over again. So let's talk about data for a second. 
the amount of data that is used to train a model keeps growing generation over generation. Just for an example, Llama 3 was trained on over 15 trillion tokens. That's more than all the text that exists in all the books that have ever been written. And so that kind of data spurs more compute. And compute is close to our hearts here. We see a trend where compute is growing about four times year over year for large models all across the industry. So assuming that scaling laws will continue to hold, there are a bunch of infrastructure cha challenges. The first of which is that it's hard to get your hands on these incredible GPUs. These chips are expensive. Not everyone can afford them. Few companies are manufacturing them. And I, you know, I, I, I say this a lot, um, I, but a year ago, we had such a, a crunch for GPUs during the supply chain crisis. I don't know if any of you remember this during the COVID years. Um, but finding a GPU during the supply chain crisis was like trying to buy toilet paper <laughs> at the height of the pandemic. It was hunger games out there for GPUs, right? So what can we do to mitigate this risk? What are we doing at Meta to mitigate this risk? We, like several other companies, are building our own custom silicon. We call it MTIA, Meta's Training and Inference Accelerator. And a huge advantage to building our own silicon is that we can customize it for our workloads. And that gives us a cost benefit, and that gives us a performance benefit. At Meta, we use Triton to make it easy for ML engineers to program against our accelerators. And this is used for AMD, it's used for NVIDIA, and it's used for MTIA, which is our own silicon. And we plan to continue to add several other backends over the years. And I know there's a talk later talking about how we actually built het hardware heterogeneity into our fleet, which I really encourage you all to attend. Now that I've addressed scaling, let's talk about the speed of innovation with model architectures. AI research is evolving fast. We all know this, we're all part of it. There's a new paper coming out every other day. And on the infra side, one of our biggest jobs is to make sure that we can take all of this innovation from research and have it available for production as quickly as possible. Here, we lean on PyTorch. PyTorch has a bunch of different strengths. I mean, we have an amazing community. It has first-class Python integration, imperative-style programming, an API that's both flexible and simple. And we recently launched PyTorch 2.0. For those of you who are familiar with 2.0, we, we now get the same eager mode development experience, but with a turbocharged compiler under the hood. And so with the introduction of Torch Inductor, we now get to generate really fast code for multiple accelerators. And we use Triton as the default backend for our GPUs. And so what we see, uh, an organic trend that we've seen is AI engineers are using Triton to complement PyTorch 2.0. And the reason they write their kernels in Triton is that because it offers a really Pythonic way to author kernels, and these kernels tend to be performant out of the box, and they're not tied to any particular backend hardware. And it allows our researchers to spend their time on algorithmic optimizations so they don't have to go eke out every bit of performance in a very specific hardware. Triton's growth within Meta has just been explosive. It's measured in the footprint of kernels we see in our code base. It's measured with the GPU workloads we see growing in our data centers. And just for context, we expect to have over 600,000 GPUs in our data centers by the end of the year. And so that's why this strategy is so key for us, for us to be able to scale. So to sum, to sum it up, Triton helps us reduce the barrier to entry for AI engineers. It helps accelerate model innovation so we can bring models very quickly from research to production. And at Meta, we are betting on Triton, both for energy and cost efficiencies. So this is really, really exciting technology, and I hope that everybody starts to adopt it. Finally, I'll say we're all in this together. There is no single company or research group that has been responsible for all of the advances we've seen over the past decade. Instead, progress happens when we build on each other's successes. There's a paper that gets 
released here, our new open source model. And then on top of that comes the next innovation and the next innovation. And so I hope that you all look at that as the spirit of the Triton conference today. I hope you all feel inspired to go tackle some of these super tough AI challenges ahead of us. I all hope you have a great afternoon. And you know, there's a bunch of talks, panels, um, that I think will be really, really interesting. I'd like to turn it over now to the creator and the driving force behind Triton, Phil Thier. Phil is going to give the State of the Union talk on Triton, uh, and he's going to lay out the, fu the future vision for Triton as well. And Phil has asked me to mention that he is the most prolific author of Triton kernels in OpenAI today. And he strongly encourages, and I fully support this, by the way, strongly encourages that all Triton developers, please dog food Triton. With that, handing it over to Phil. Thank you.